China's first domestically built aircraft carrier Type 001A has been launched successfully at the northeastern Chinese port of Dalian at 9.20 a.m. Wednesday morning. Six tugboats pulled the carrier out from the shipyard. China's first aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, was purchased from Ukraine and refitted at the same shipyard. Construction of the second, developed using Chinese technology, began in 2013. Sunday was the 68th anniversary of the founding of the People's Liberation Army Navy. Some military enthusiasts thought the carrier would be launched during the anniversary, and came to Dalian to witness the ceremony. It didn't happen as they had expected. The symbol of China's technological power, industrial capability and overall strength, an internet user wrote on Weibo, the country's version of Twitter. Another internet user referred to China's humiliation in the late 19th century when it was defeated by the Japanese Navy, expressing delight that a great country like China has finally got its own big weapon. The ceremony to launch the Shandong was chaired by Fan Changlong, vice chairman of the powerful Central Military Commission. President Xi Jinping, who is the commission's chairman and hence the country's top military leader, was not present. The carrier is 315 meters long and 75 meters wide, has a cruising speed of 31 knots and a displacement of 70,000 tons. It is slightly larger than the Liaoning, China's first aircraft carrier, which was refurbished from the semi-completed Soviet carrier Veyag, which Beijing bought from a Ukrainian shipyard in 1998. Even though its layout is almost the same as the Liaoning, the Shandong features new equipment and a more advanced operational concept, including a bigger hangar to carry more J-15 fighter jets and more space on deck for helicopters and other aircraft. But military experts said the launch of the new carrier represented only modest progress of China's military modernization, given the huge technological gap between the Planavi and its most powerful rival in Asia-Pacific, the US Navy. While China is celebrating the launch of its first homegrown aircraft carrier, the country should also be mindful that the United States is possibly deploying its most advanced Ford-class supercarrier to the Asia-Pacific, Beijing-based naval expert Li Ji said. With the launch of the Type 001A, China would still only have two carriers, with the new ship requiring two or three years before it was put into full service. The US has 10 carrier strike groups, with at least four deployed in the Asia-Pacific region. The US Navy has 9.5 million tons of shipping, while China has just 400,000 tons, or 4% of the US capability. The US also has different kinds of carrier-based fighters, including its advanced carrier variants of the F-35 fighter. While China just has the J-15, Meanwhile, the US has more than 200,000 Marines, while China is just trying to expand its force to 100,000. There are still huge gaps in both hardware and software between the two countries' maritime capabilities. The US is deliberately going to remind China that the generation gap between Planavi and the US carrier strike groups as well as their fighting capabilities will be further enlarged when the carrier Gerald R. Ford is commissioned this year. The 100,000-ton nuclear-powered U.S. carrier is almost twice the size of the Type 001A carrier. The giant ship is powered by two advanced nuclear reactors, and equipped with electromagnetic aircraft launching system, even though its recovery device was changed to cable resting gears for safety consideration. In Indian perspective launch of China's second aircraft carrier Type 001A, which is likely to be named as Shandong, will render China an edge for the first time in the carrier race with its Asian rival, a literal 2 to 1 advantage. After decommissioning the INS Virat earlier this year, the Indian Navy is down to a single carrier, INS Vikramaditya. Worse than that, the Shandong has been built at China's own giant shipyard at Dalian. Vikramaditya, the 1980s era Russian carrier formerly known as the Admiral Gorshkov was bought after refit. China however needs two carrier strike groups in the West Pacific Ocean and two in the Indian Ocean. The Indian Navy plans to name, commission and float the INS Vikrant, indigenous aircraft carrier, next year. At that point, the ship is unlikely to have its aviation complex in place, or even anti-aircraft missiles. 
Indian Navy has dejected the Cretaceous Navy in waiting for progress in its bid to buy new 57 jets for its aircraft carrier fleet. The new INS Vikrant will only be combat ready by 2023-8 years behind schedule. The conventional power type 001A retains the ski jump takeoff ramp of the Liaoning, and when China's next generation aircraft carrier, the type 002, is launched around 2021, it will not be nuclear-powered vessel with electromagnetic aircraft catapults. The Type 002 carrier would most likely retain standard steam-driven catapults because it's impossible to develop a completely new generation carrier in just a few years. The US Ford-class carrier was launched in November 2013, and expected to be commissioned this year. But Washington has not announced where it will be stationed. Launch of Type 001 Nation and is certainly a challenge and worry for India which has been the only navy in the Indian Ocean region to have operated an aircraft carrier so far. No one knows if China deploys its new carrier in Indian Ocean where it is frequently sending its nuclear-powered submarines. Moreover, Indian Ocean is a strategic region for China where originates its maritime silk route if it's one belt one road program and India being its main adversary in the region.